Welcome to Watches with Dennis, and today I want to give my first thoughts on the Zenith Chronomaster Sport Titanium. Uh, we'll go ahead and dive into the specifications first, and then I'll give more reactionary thoughts to the reveal. But starting off, the watch is 41 millimeters in diameter. It's at 13.6 millimeters of thickness. As the name Chronomaster Sport Titanium would suggest, it is a titanium case. It's actually grade 5 titanium, so it does feature both brushed and polished surfaces. The crown and the pushers are also made out of titanium. The dial is protected by a domed sapphire crystal with double-sided anti-reflective coating. It also has a display case back protected by a sapphire crystal. The watch has 100 meters of water resistance. The dial itself is a nickel gray sunburst color. There are three sub-registers and those are in three different colors. The small seconds is at the nine o'clock position. There's a 60 minute counter at the six o'clock position. There's a 60 second counter at the three o'clock position. And as is common with El Primero's, there is a date window at the 430 position. The watch does feature Super Luminova. There is a change up on the bezel here versus the traditional Chronomaster Sport. On the traditional models, it's a ceramic bezel insert, but in this case, they've gone ahead and went with a brushed titanium bezel. You can see in that bezel the engravings for the one-tenth of a second track, which is what that sort of central seconds hand does. It sweeps around the dial once every 10 seconds. And that is because that is a feature of the El Primero Caliber 3600, which powers this particular watch. That's an in-house movement that beats at 5 hertz, has 35 joules, and offers approximately 60 hours of power reserve. If electing the bracelet version, you get a three-link titanium bracelet with brushed and polished segments. And the slightly more affordable option is a black rubber strap. The rubber strap version on Zenith's website is priced at $11,300 US dollars, whereas the bracelet version is $11,800. I should note that the bracelet version of the steel kind of regular Chronomaster Sport is $11,000 US dollars even. So compared to a lot of luxury watches, this is actually a fairly modest price upgrade for the titanium version of $800. And so with that, let's go ahead and dive into my first thoughts. Now, this is not a review. I've not handled these watches. So these are just reactions. Uh, overall, I think this is a very impressive release by Zenith. I think Zenith is finding a lot of success with the Chronomaster line, in particular the Chronomaster Sport. It seems they finally struck on a fairly successful commercial line. And that's why we're starting to see a lot more derivations off of the original model. And while I'm pretty sure at some stage they're going to jump the shark with this and we're going to have reactions kind of like we do with Omega Speedmasters where it just seems like there's every conceivable model under the sun. Today is not that day and I think this is a very good differentiating factor for what is already coming out of a very interesting lineup. The biggest criticism I think people have with the Zenith Chronomaster Sport in particular is that it gives a great deal of Rolex Daytona vibes. Titanium is going to be an excellent segregating factor versus what the Rolex Daytona offers. Granted, Rolex might come out with a titanium version of the Daytona at some point, but I'm not speculating that we see it here in 2024. The look of the bezel might even remind some people of the old El Primero Daytona. So in a way, maybe I'm, I'm speculating too much that it's a differentiating factor, but I think most modern watch collectors aren't necessarily all that familiar with that dated of a Daytona piece. I always thought the different colors of the tri-registers were a good way to distinguish the Zenith lineup from the Rolex Daytona lineup. Uh, I think that's still the case, though, obviously. It's much more muted on this version, which I prefer the more original color scheme of the tri-registers, but... Really, given the whole look of the watch with this darker gray of the titanium, I do think it integrates very well. And like almost all of these Chronomaster sports, I find it extremely attractive. Now, for my part, what this makes me wonder is the other watch that they kind of launched when they were pushing the El Primero 3600, the Zenith Chronomaster Original, a watch that I own, if they're thinking about possibly making the more vintage-inspired line, which is very much not like a Daytona, in titanium as well. And if they were to do that, I would be sorely tempted to go ahead and jump over. I believe it's been noted that this version, the titanium version of the Chronomaster Sport, weighs about 30% less than the stainless steel version because of the metal switch. And I have to admit, the Chronomaster Original is a very comfortable watch to wear. I'm pretty sure this would be very comfortable to wear. Uh, obviously, this 41 millimeter sizing is going to be a lot more attractive to individuals than I think the Chronomaster Original, which is a, which is a notably smaller watch, would be for most wrists. So overall, I think this is a very solid release. It's surprisingly not upcharged as much as I would have thought, given the metal switch. 
titanium is not a precious metal. I'm glad they did not end up pushing the pricing aggressively. We're used to seeing thousands more asked for from luxury brands. Now, this is still a quite expensive watch. And while I'm sure there will be initial hype and buzz for it, we saw that with the Chronomaster Original and the Chronomaster Sport, especially the Chronomaster Sport. But a lot of that was driven by the supply chain issues and the difficulty in getting them because of that during the pandemic era. So I think this is going to follow much more of the chart that we're used to with Zenith, or if you want a maybe more famous example, a chart that we kind of see with Tudor, where... Yeah, for a few months, this watch is probably going to be difficult to get, but then I bet it starts to show up on gray market. But overall, I say, you know, A, effort out of Zenith. I think this is an extremely attractive model line. This is a very logical move to do. They've executed it in a very attractive fashion while keeping the pricing relative to their other Chronomaster sport watches right in line with where it should be. But anyway, those are my first thoughts. I'd love to hear yours. Please comment below. I'd like to read those. If you enjoy the video, please do give it a like. If you want to be notified when I have a new video out, just click the subscribe button and I'll talk to you all on the next one.